familiar face, I think, to our viewers. And a very interesting and important announcement today by TD Securities naming Rana Ambrose as deputy chair. Of course, uh, she's also former leader of the PC party. Rana, nice to see you and get caught up with you again. And congratulations on the announcement. Thank you. It's, it's uh, really exciting. Great mm -hmm. to see you, too. Thank you. Yes, and this shift, as Greg was just mentioning, uh, essentially politics into banking. Uh, for yeah. some of our viewers to understand as well, you have been an advisor to TD for a number of years now. So in this new role, give us a little bit of a detail in terms of what you hope to accomplish, what your focus and mandate will be. Well, first, I have to say, um, considering the economy, it's great to have the opportunity to work in a capacity like this when so many people are out of work. And the team is great. I've had a chance to get to know them in a, in a small role that I had with them over the last few years. And I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I'm a big believer in people. They have a great culture and I really like the team. And so I join as deputy chairwoman <laughs> and I'm really excited. <laughs> Obviously, investment banking is a big part of it, but I'm also uh, coming on board to support their work on environmental, social and governance. And of course, being a Westerner at the high ranks in banking is, is I found out not that typical. So I'm glad to bring a Western voice and make the case that on the ESG side, Canada is working towards the cleanest barrel of oil and let's see what we can do to create more opportunities in the oil and gas sector. And I also am going to be doing some work around women's leadership, which is a natural fit for me, but a big passion for me. And I love to, to work with women, mentor women. There's a lot of great women in banking and I think we need a lot more, frankly. Yeah. Uh, having been in banking most of my career, I would agree. Uh, hopefully we'll have some conversations on the side on, on that front. I'm sure we will. Um, but in terms of some of the uh, the ESG side of, uh, of your mandate, um, what do you think is um, untapped right now and how critical is it that that uh, that we all kind of get on the same page sooner than later? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of conversations happening around the social and governance issues but particularly around the environment for Canada. When I think of the importance of the oil and gas sector for our economy, seeing that investment in the oil and gas sector has dropped by almost 50% in the last uh, couple of months, um, you know, it, we're in dire straits in that industry. And the reality is I'm a big believer, and I think a lot of people are uh, in the industry, that if we do not become the cleanest barrel of oil in the world, we are not going to attract the kind of investment we need to make sure that this industry survives and thrives and continues continues to produce, not just produce oil and gas, but produce all those great revenues for this country. So I, I hope to make that case. And I think there's, there's a lot of support for that across the country. But we have to be the cleanest barrel of oil in the world. And we've got to do our part when it comes to uh, clean energy and climate change. And so, Rana, then how, how will you navigate that message across Canada, um, not even just internally, obviously, at the bank, but, but really given your background from a uh, political perspective? How do, you, how do you navigate that conversation so that we actually have perhaps a, a bit of a change going on for the benefit of the well, Westerners I, I, and across Canada, as I, you mentioned? Yeah, I think it's about collaboration. It's about bringing people together. It's about having that conversation and, and for those who might be skeptical of the Western view to know that, that people like me and many others believe that we need to, to, to create the cleanest barrel of oil. And there are many leaders in politics, in, uh, in, in post-secondary institutions, in research think tanks that are doing incredible work across this country. We need to continue to work together to, to get to a place where we can say that we have the most environmentally friendly, sustainable and cleanest barrel of oil in the world. And if we can do that, I think we can make the case for investment in the oil and gas sector. At the same time, with last week's announcement that um, Krisha Freeland is our new finance minister, they are proposing a green recovery, the recovery to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, look, I think Krista Freeland is great. She's a good friend of mine. We've had many conversations about ESG, about the oil and gas sector. I think she does understand exactly what I'm talking about. And I think she actually supports that. What we need to do is now come up with a practical framework to make this happen. And we need all governments working together. We need 
industry working with government to get to a place where we can reach what we call a net zero so that we can produce oil and gas and produce basically net zero emissions. Um, and there are other countries in the world like Norway that, do, that does this. I do think there is a place in a green plan for the oil and gas sector. There is a technological solution uh, to make sure we reach a net, zero, so a net zero emissions framework in this country. And the federal government can support that. So when they talk about a green plan, I'm really hopeful <laughs> and I will do my best to make <laughs> the case that it should include the oil and gas sector. And given the question mark and the uncertainty as to whether or not it does, and, and it did cause a little bit of concern for a number of people, um, what, what's your view right now in terms of the Canadian economic policies and also, of course, corporate confidence across Canada? Well, I think corporate confidence is low, and obviously that's problematic. I think that there's a lot of concern about the spending happening. Much of it is absolutely necessary to support Canadians in their everyday lives to get through this pandemic and this economic downturn. But there's also questions, how are we going to pay for this? We're already at our capacity when it comes to taxes. We don't want to see the government raise taxes. Um, they say they won't. Uh, but in this next speech from the throne, in this next budget, um, I assume that there's going to be some big spending. So we have to keep our, I think, as those of us in the finance community and those of us who are making the case uh, for balanced budgets and fiscal prudence, we have to continue to make the case to government that it can't just be about unlimited spending. And when we think about um, perhaps other uncertainties in addition to COVID-19, of course, it's the U.S. presidential election. Uh, we've spoken so many times as it relates to uh, NAFTA and the relationship between Canada and the United States. What do you think of the relationship right now? And, and what, what would you be preparing for as it relates to the election and the Canadian relationship with the U.S.? Well, we finally signed the, the new NAFTA, and of course, I was uh, happy to be part of supporting the government working on that. But here we thought we had come to a resolution uh, and we had, had, we had some closure with the U.S. government, but it took very little time for them to slap tariffs back on Canada. So I think this is the new normal. Uh, we have to expect that the U.S., if they feel there's an advantage for them or that they're in any way slighted, that they will open up trade investigations. And if they see there is, if they can make the case, they will slap tariffs on us. And so while we have a strong and deep relationship with the US economically, and we're highly integrated with them, and we have to continue to have a positive relationship, the politics of the Trump administration are one of great protectionism. But let's not forget that the, a Biden administration will probably be no different. So depending on what happens in the election, there may be changes in outlook. Um, there may be changes in the U.S. in terms of approach to the environment or other things. But when it comes to trade, we've got the two parties in the U.S. are both very protectionist. And so I think we have to think in the long term that this is going to be our new normal in Canada with relations, at least with the U.S. on trade.